seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And we have liftoff. Beak is pitching over. Stage one proportional is nominal. HVB discharge looks nominal. Entered burnout detect mode. There we go, T plus 50 seconds into the NROL 199 mission on its Antipodean adventure. Electron's engines will soon power down slightly to prepare the rocket to pass through max Q, or the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure against Electron during launch. Cleared max Q. H1 propulsion is nominal. And Electron has passed through Max Q, the rocket's first major test after leaving the pad at Launch Complex 1 on the coast. You see below there on your screen. Electron's nine Rutherford engines are firing hot as they burn through the first stage's tanks of liquid oxygen and RP1 propellant. T plus one minute and 42 seconds and Electron's trajectory is also looking good. The rocket is at now over 30 kilometers above Earth and moving quickly at nearly 4,000 kilometers an hour. Ten seconds to Miko. Miko confirmed. There you heard it and saw it on your screen, all three events happening back to back through Miko stage separation and second stage engine start. Currently on your screen is Electron second stage continuing nominally for the NROL 199 mission. Soon it will shed its payload protective fairing to lose the unnecessary weight now that the vehicle is in space. In fact, there it goes, we can see it falling away on our screen there, so the payload fairing has split in half and fallen away. The NROL 199 payload is now exposed to space in preparation for payload deployment, and Electron's second stage is continuing to orbit, carrying the kick stage in the payload. Everything continues to look nominal, with the Rutherford engine glowing bright as it powers the mission on. The burn of this engine lasts for about seven minutes to help bring the payload closer to its final orbit before we have a second stage separation that enables our third stage, known as the kick stage, to carry on with the rest of the mission. Our kick stage is critical in delivering the NRO the exact orbital insertion they need for this national security payload. With its own reliable Curie engine, our kick stage can be maneuvered precisely to achieve pinpoint orbital drop off of the NRO's payload. That payload deployment is expected to take place around an hour from now.
Stage two propulsion still nominal. Look at that beautiful view from space. Everything is looking great so far on this Antipodean adventure. Coming up to T plus five minutes and nine seconds and Electron stage two engine continues to fire nominally along our expected trajectory, ready to deliver the NRO payload to space. We are about one minute away now from our next mission milestone, the swap of our rocket's batteries, providing electric power to the Stage 2 Rutherford engine you can see on your screen. So the Rutherford's electric fuel pumps use electricity rather than a pre-burner to operate, but once the batteries are drained, we don't need them anymore. They become unnecessary weight on the second stage, so they're discarded when we swap to a fresh new one that keeps the engine running. This is our battery hot swap event, which you can see about three quarters of the way up the timeline on the left of your screen. And coming up shortly on the main screen, you should see that shiny silver object pop free. Throttling down. Hot swap. There you go, right on time. We have had battery hot swap on the second stage. Confirmed across the nets and visually if you saw them falling away from the rocket on your screen there. We have had a clean run through Mission Milestone so far. It was only seven or so minutes ago that Electron cleared the pad at LC1, having since completed successful passes through Max-Q, main engine cutoff and stage separation to reach this point now in the mission. Next up will be the second stage engine shutdown and the final stage separation that will follow the same process as the earlier MECO and separation of these stages, uh, the first and second stages. So right now though, with stage two's engine still firing, the mission remains on its trajectory to orbit as expected and all is going well for NROL 199. FTS is saved. We are well past the common line now, traveling to this mission's destination in low Earth orbit. When we reach the end of this second stage burn and separate the kick stage, we'll drift along in an elliptical path around Earth before the kick stage's engine lights up and propels the mission into a circular orbit. That happens just moments before payload deployment and the end of the mission for Rocket Lab. From the ground to space and on orbit operations within only an hour is pretty cool. Okay, so in the next minute or so, we should reach the final acts of the second stage for this mission, the shutdown of its Rutherford engine called Seco, before the kick stage separates and carries on with the payload. We'll see the engine's nozzle fade from bright red as it cools down, and from there we'll be ending the broadcast as the mission continues to its classified orbit. Seco confirm. Perfect transfer orbit. There we go, that engine nozzle cooling off was the visual indicator, along with the confirmation from Mission Control that the second stage engine has shut down and the kick stage with the NRO payload has separated. There are still a couple of events to go on the third stage before payload deployment for the NRO. 
Our third stage will first complete that initial pass of Earth before it ignites to circularize its orbit and bring the payload to its drop-off point in space. That action will mark the end of the mission for Rocket Lab, but the start of the spacecraft's operation in space for the NRO, and we'll update you on payload deployment across our social media channels once it's confirmed. It has been a busy few weeks at Rocket Lab with the launch of the Capstone mission to the Moon only five weeks ago, on-orbit operations for that mission for the week following, and another mission for the NRO soon after that. Between Capstone and NROL 162 was our shortest turnaround yet at only 15 days, with only 22 days to get us to today's mission. Keep an eye on Rocket Lab's social media for confirmation again of that payload deployment and mission success for NROL 199. But from the whole team, a big thank you to the NRO for entrusting us with the back-to-back -back missions for both 162 and 199. And thanks to you at home for joining us on our 29th Electron launch. We'll see you back here soon. This is Rocket Lab Mission Control, signing off.